Here's a question. Why do movies look funny when you play them backwards? Say for example, you took an ice cube and you placed it on a table. You took out your phone and took a video of the ice cube as it melted slowly on the table. Time goes on, the ice cube would get smaller and the puddle of water would become larger. Until there's just water left. Now imagine you press rewind. What you see is the ice cube expanding out of that puddle of water and that looked kind of funny. And the fact that that video looks funny is what we call the arrow of time. Now this is a pretty complicated situation because the ice is made up of many molecules of water and is sitting on a hot table and everything is vibrating around. So let's zoom in to a microscopic level. Of course the water and the ice are made of water molecules and if you play the movie backwards or forwards neither one of them looks strange. So imagine you had a single atom and it was just floating through space. Well that would make a pretty boring movie. And in fact, if you play the movie backwards, it would look exactly the same. But if we're thinking about looking at atoms, you'd have to shine light on them. And that light is made out of photons, and those photons push the atom around. That's a basic feature of quantum mechanics, that measurement necessarily disturbs the atom. So the real question that we want to answer is, do quantum movies look funny when you play them backwards? To answer this question, we went into the lab to do some quantum experiments. These take place in something called a cryostat, which uses a bunch of pumps and hard work to get things really cold. We've got a bunch of electronics, and the quantum stuff is down in the cryostat at the coldest temperatures. We send signals into the cryostat, and out come quantum signals. It's like when we shine light on that atom. The quantum signals allow us to study how the quantum stuff moves. And how it moves is what we call a quantum trajectory. It's similar to the situation of a ball bouncing on the floor. It moves from a start to a finish in the same way that quantum trajectories also move from some start to a finish. We can look at these trajectories both forwards and backwards, and we can study which way looks strange or normal. Imagine one trajectory where we look at the forward and backward case. We define the arrow of time by comparing the probability of the forward trajectory to the backward trajectory and take the logarithm of this ratio so it's a kind of entropy. And we look at these ratios for a bunch of different trajectories. Most of the time, this entropy is positive. The arrow of time points forwards. But sometimes, the arrow of time seems to point backwards. So, do quantum movies look funny when we play them backwards? Yes, most of the time. And this means that entropy generally increases, but not always. Sometimes we see that the quantum movies look funny when we play them forwards. In this case, entropy decreases. So at the microscopic level, we see how the arrow of time emerges from quantum measurement alone.